Hi, I'm Carrie. And I'm Jade. And we're the Curly Critics. And today we're talking about Austin Land by Shannon Hale. So, as you guys know, we traded books for Secret Santa for Christmas time. I almost said for Halloween, and that would have been so funny. Yeah, and like. It was more so like secret, secret book Santa. We so knew if that you we had want each to other. do secret book Santa with your friends, it's very fun. Um, the the prompt or the thing we were supposed to do was get books for each other that celebrate the new year and new beginnings. And there aren't many New Year's books, ladies and gents. So we had some digging to do. And I went to Half Price Books. I went through all the different... Um, you know, online Googles, and <laughs> and I found one book that was actually really popular, and it was right on the shelf in Half Price Books, and I was like, this is too easy. I mustn't. So I found this other book. Oh, I don't know. It's It doesn't matter now. Uh, I have a screenshot of it, it somewhere. But um, I found this book called Austin Land, and I'm like, you know... This chick really likes Pride and Prejudice. We really like the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. We rewatch it once a year at least. <laughs> because it's fantastic. So let's do a book about Jane Austen and pray it has something to do with new beginnings. And here we are. It's yeah, so this so is the book Jane got for me. She's really, really trying to build you up my Jane Austen obsession. Bridgerton as soon as it came out, so... But yeah, it's working really well. Yeah, so as soon as it came Not out. as soon as it came out, because I was on vacation. As soon as I got back from vacation. Yeah, I want to read that book. And then That's I bought a book at, the li- or at Walmart the other day that was about Jane Austen. Yeah. So our history with this book is that Jade bought it for me, and stopped. And then I read it. They were really well, she read it, and then I read through. it. Just like the way she wrote them, it didn't flow very well. It wasn't a very good introduction, in my opinion. So getting through the first three chapters was like being tortured. But then after that, it picked up, and I couldn't put it down. And I read it in like two days. It was very good. Yeah, I read it in like three days, I think. I don't remember. I read 50 pages and then I like took a day off. Me, except and then I read the other 150 off. pages. <laughs> or 250 pages. Well, that. Was I liked it. It was fun. Was it was cute. Like, it's not my favorite book in really, the whole world, but it was not fun. Not like really invest in the characters, but invest enough to be like, this is nice. Reading this book just reminded me of what it's like to read, if that makes sense. Like, there were multiple points, like, reading this book that I was, like, screaming at the book and, like, putting it down and, like, putting it on my face and, like, you know, being dramatic about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot what it was like to read for fun and to, like, get invested in the characters. I, like, Mm -hmm. recently just, like, got really really into reading again. I've read so many books in the last two months. Like, more than I've read in the last, like, three years. <laughs> and it happened to, when I was reading The Wrath and the Dawn, that book series, I, like, closed it, and I was like, I hate this book. <sighs> I was I so dramatic that. about it, and I was like, why did I ever stop reading? Like, this is so fun. Yeah, yeah it's not so much like, oh, I would do it, and then college. Me hate reading. I had no, more important things to work about. books were fine. It was just, we didn't have enough time to read for fun and read the books we had to read. It was very hard. Time management was not a thing. And there's also an element of when you spend all of your time using your brain. Like, 
I would wake up in the morning, go to school until three, from like yeah. seven to three, I would be at school. And then if it was during the fall, I would stay at school until six because of marching band. And then I had to do my exactly. homework. Yeah. Then said after all of that brain power, the last thing I wanted to do was use my brain more. Especially with all of the streaming services, it's easier to just zone out and watch a TV show or yeah, watch a movie. Especially than during quarantine, actually read books. You have the choice but books as are awesome. to what you can do because there's less things you can do out in the world. Like, what are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose to fill your head with lots of Netflix, which is fine in moderation, or fill it with knowledge and books and even not just knowledge because what did we learn from this book nothing it was just fun like it was just a fun read and that's hard to find lately mm, yes even though we can't see them we learned that british guys are nice and pretty yeah i kind of imagined him to be ugly but I imagine them to be nice. I don't know. I don't know why. I hate that. <laughs> I just anytime oh. I imagine Darcy, I'm like, ugh, ugly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Help. Oh, I don't. It's very I have vivid. a really hard time imagining faces when I'm reading. Yeah. That's why this, movie that adaptations of things are so helpful for me up. because I literally cannot put a face to face. This needs to be things. a Netflix movie. Like, no, it's not. You're lying. Tell me. I think it is because this is just written to be a movie. Let me look it up. Like the way she wrote it was so oh, it was so good. What? Yeah, it's a movie with Carrie Russell. Oh, no, that's why I said Netflix movie. It came out in movie. 2013, and it has good. a 32% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ah, okay. Well, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna get it at the library. It's not I'm available anywhere. Bootleg it. I don't know. I'm not gonna do that. That's illegal. It's fine. But yeah. Yeah, if you're going to do that, don't publicize it on I the internet. I just desperately want to Sorry, see FBI all these guy. crazy things happen in real life and her just narrating it going, wow, I'm in love with Colin Firth. Please kill me. Like... When did this book come out? 2007. I just... It's funny to me that she yeah. was so obsessed with the Colin Firth one because everybody from our generation is obsessed with the 2005 one. I just one. knew he was a very big deal. I... And so I was like, huh? Colin Firth? Can't relate. <laughs> so, yeah, he's just... Do you want to... That movie's old for us. Book, or do you want me to? And Colin Firth is old for us. You're pretty good at summarizing things. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, but you sound coherent Thanks. when you summarize things. I'm I like, just talk oh, and then see what happens. Oh, remember that thing in chapter 7 on page 42 where it's like, ah, ah. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Okay, so in this book, a girl, Jane Hayes... Yeah, is she's thirty, and she makes a very big deal that she's. She's 30. a hopeless she romantic with no prospects. In the first three chapters. And she just really loves Pride and Prejudice, and she's had a bunch of doomed relationships, and she just wants to find love, but she believes that she can't find love because she's stuck in this idea of finding the Mister Darcy. So her aunt dies, and instead of giving her money in the will like a normal person would, she gives Jane a three-week trip, all expenses paid, to Austin Land, which is a historical, submersive, like, Regency-era era period, where you go and you pretend like you're in the Regency-era 
and you live in the uh, Jane Austen yeah, world and you like make pretend to fall in love adults. and then you leave, basically. Yeah, yeah spoiler alert. Uh, you never so then she goes and she falls in love and that's basically <laughs> the whole book. The thing about this book that was the most confusing to me Why was, was that confusing? the fact that everyone was acting. Because we, like, Jane goes in expecting it okay. to be, like, a real thing. Like, people are there to really find love. Everyone is just, like, everyone Not there is just real people who are, like, pretending kind of to do this because around. they want to live in Austin land. Right, instead of, like, we discover that almost everyone, like, all of the guys, especially, are paid actors who are orchestrating the whole event, who are pretending to fall in love with people and to make this what it is, and to make it a fairy tale, yeah. and then people pay lots of money, and it's then they leave, and then they come back like, next year to do it again with a different character. There's three girls throughout the whole thing, um, three main girls. There's Jane, there's Miss Charming, and Miss Hartwright. And these are all fake names. Like, they come in with fake names. They don't get to wear modern clothes. They don't get to have their phones. It's all very orchestrated, very organized. And Jane kind of walked in, and the lady was very judgmental of her. Like, oh, I'm orchestrating this thing, and you need to follow the rules. Kind of like she was street scum because she wasn't a regular because these other two were regulars miss hartwright and miss charming and miss charming's this older lady and um i just thought it was so odd the chapter where um miss charming isn't being charmed and so she tells the lady who's orchestrating everything and suddenly one of the guys is forced to like fall in love with her and have secret rendezvous and all this stuff. I just thought that was so weird. Like, oh, this guy isn't falling in love with me and I'm not having a good time and I paid a lot of money. Like, I need him to fall in love with me. <laughs> right. I feel like the concept of the book would be better if it was real. If it was real people like Jane who yeah, I paid just money like that's more to come to this thing to actually in fall in love. Because then you're really jacking with people's feelings instead of it being fake and going home and going back to your normal life. I mean, like, the... I mean, like, both the girls and the guys would be signing up to do it. That everybody's going in, like, a Bachelor-esque, like, we're signing know. up to I do just, this to I find think love. That's weird. In a I Pride and Prejudice the type of this book, environment. That it was actors. I also get it because there's a gardener, and you're not supposed to flirt with the gardeners, talk to them. They're just part of the background. And so there's one named Martin that Jane, of course falls in love with and they're not falls in love with but she goes to where he's staying and he has curtains up and they're watching American American soccer basketball and that they smuggled in and all these modern Foot foods basketball. and they make out all night and they have secret rendezvous and you find out at the end he was paid to do that. She thought all of that was real and she was falling for that because it was real. She wasn't falling for any of the acting stuff. Even when it wasn't acting, she couldn't tell the difference. I liked that part because the dramatic part was that she couldn't tell what was real and what was fake. Yeah, that part just made me really uncomfortable. Especially near the end, like right before she left, when she really couldn't tell what was real and what was fake, and it just really took her out of it, and it like ruined the experience for me. I really didn't like reading that. 
I didn't like imagining myself in that situation of being and like in Jane's defense she had no idea what she was getting into but I just really didn't like the idea that she had discovered that everything that she thought was real and everything that she thought was good was all fake and just yeah. living in that place but of again, who's lying to me is she, anything that's happening to me actually real I feel like she knew that when she was going into it I don't know maybe the setup is more what you're talking about but I was expecting more of oh everyone's acting yeah yeah Jane thought that it was yeah. real so like we go through the book discovering that it's not real at the same time that she is yeah, Which I don't I mind that. I just that don't like the moment, fact that it wasn't real. That moment that because I feel bad for Jane. The lady orchestrating everything and she goes, oh yeah, we always have some gardeners put aside because sometimes people don't want to fall in love with the ordinary, like the regular actors. And just that sinking feeling, I didn't see that coming. I probably should have. It was pretty obvious now that I think about it, but... Yeah, I didn't see that coming either. But also, I forgot what I was gonna say. I didn't like it was the the ending, the build up. It felt like the ending was really rushed. It was like she discovered everyone was lying to her and everything was fake, and then she left. And then Martin and the Mister Nobly guy are like having a fight over her in the airport, while like the entire book everybody was looking bad on her and like thinking bad about her and be like oh you're just not rich enough you're not one of us and so it felt really weird to me it felt like there wasn't enough build-up for these two guys yeah, to break I away from their why characters Martin and be like no i actually want to be with you in real life in my opinion i get why nobly did because he was in love with her but martin that was just for dramatic effect like, she just wanted a fight right. in the airport. Oh, these two guys are fighting over me. And she goes, nah, I don't want either of you. I'm dipping. And then Nobly follows her onto the airplane and I die inside. Right. Yeah. I think Martin was just supposed to be a bad person and he just wanted to have sex with her and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was totally taking and advantage And he was taking of advantage of the fact that she didn't know the difference between real and fake. I just don't know. I've only really read Pride and Prejudice. And there were a lot of references to the other things in this book. But it seemed like she was trying to write this book in a way yeah, to parallel Pride and Prejudice. But it just, like, fell short. So I would have wished that it had, it had paralleled that more. But then also, I'm saying that because I don't know if it's just like a mix yeah, of all of the Jane Austen things, I, and that's I what it ended you. up being. I see because I don't know the other ones very well. I thought it was so hilarious that Jane, every time, and you even mentioned this, every time she thinks about Nobly, she's like, oh, he's nothing like Mr. Darcy. He's callous, and he's rude, and he's horrible. And I'm like... Did you read the book? <laughs> there was at one point where I was looking at it, where I was, yeah, reading, and he, she goes, Mr. Darcy would never say yeah. something like that. Oh He's gosh. not rude and disrespectful like that. And I was like, have you even seen the Lizzie Ugh. Bennet Diary? Which, I don't think that was around in 2007. Yeah, but for a reason. It's still, Mr. Darcy is the most frustrating literary character of all time. Yeah. We only glamorize and idolize him because we know the ending. And we, like, see his character development yeah, throughout the I book. Yeah, I think probably but my favorite beginning part of, of the, the book, thing. Mr. Darcy so, is a disaster. <laughs> Jane isn't matched up with Nobly. Like, they have their partners, and she's not matched up with him. And there are several moments where she and him are together or whatever, and she ends up talking about how she used to love to paint. And my favorite scene in the whole book is when she goes into her room and there's 
there's a canvas and there's old oils and there's no one around like who would have done this in the dark and he comes in and she's showing him how excited she is and she eventually shows him what she's painted and it's the most joyous part of her entire life she's like i miss my old art like I digital design for a living and I'm going back to basics and it's the most amazing thing I've ever done. And I'm like, go back to basics in your art, ladies and gentlemen. But also just the fact that he did that without anyone looking, it was like, of course they're going to fall in love at the end. But I just loved that idea of he did that without anyone knowing, without anyone being able to see. And that was so sweet. Oh my gosh. Yes. I loved Mr. Nobly as a character. I don't think he was written. I was thinking, like, I love his he character in the way that he was always, like, puddle. super protective like, of her, oh, that he, like, got the paints for uh. her, that he, like, that he genuinely cared. Yeah. He was also right. sarcastic, and that, I like, He that. genuinely <laughs> cared about her, and he wasn't just pretending to care about her. Yes. I just didn't like this moment. It really took me out of it to have this moment of, oh, he's faking. This is all a lie. And then, like, the next chapter to immediately be like, oh, actually, he's in love with you. Yeah. It's a lot of, like, back and forth that didn't get a lot of follow-up. Because they're there 21 days, right? Build up and follow-through. The very last day they have a ball, or the day before the last day, whatever. They have a ball Mm -hmm. that they're all learning how to how to dance and how to act for the ball and all this stuff and she goes with him and he takes her into this room and he's all stumbling over his words and he professes his love to her and she goes no you're an actor i'm not taking this like this is ridiculous and storms out and runs away with martin and later i like how later he goes you shouldn't have said yes to my proposal. You shouldn't have because it was fake. I had landed that line on so many women and all of them had said yes. You were the first one to say no and that's when I realized that I, you were the only person that I wanted to actually say yes. Yes. It's just a lot of weird psychological warfare. Of, like, how are you supposed to get into a relationship with a person that your yeah. entire they even, building up, they even like your do entire getting like to a know period was based on a lie. Play within a play, in a sense, because this is all acting, and then they do a play as their characters. <laughs> that was awesome. I was like, this is insane. Playception. Yeah. I just loved all the little things. The end was rushed, for sure. It was just, it really was fun to read. It was frustrating, and it was cute, and it was great. And you're getting to discover Jane as she's also discovering herself, which is really nice, because she goes back and forth every other day as to who she is and what's happening, and uh, she's a hot mess. Yeah, I love the way that Jane starts the book and she's like, okay, I'll just do this thing and yeah. then we'll just leave Mr. Darcy behind forever. And at that point, I was like, well, she's going to find him because there's not a book then. But just the way she goes back and forth and she's like, the moment after she like breaks up with Martin and she's like, no, I'm going to do this for real. Like, I'm actually committing to this. We're going to see what happens because she realized that it's not just I want to give up men forever. It's just like I haven't found yeah, the right after one this. yet. She's just very precious, and I want to find a Mr. Darcy. Oh, I also want to find a man boy. that's impressed that I know all of the lyrics to Hamilton. Those are my two Ooh, care- criteria. I just found my favorite line. Well, just kidding, but still, <laughs> she'd lost all her thoughts in paint and rain. That one's very good. But this next one. But she remembered that mixed up in the ugly parts of reality were also those true moments of grace. 
there's just those little lines that I'm like, man, this is incredible. The intro sucked. It was so hard to get through because all she was doing was complaining the whole time. And I'm like, okay, you're setting up this character to suck. I hate her. She's the worst and she's nuts. She's crazy. She was like hiding her Pride and Prejudice movies from people because she was so obsessed. And even her best friend was like, honey, he ain't real. Stop. <laughs> it was a hot mess. I also like that she found her confidence throughout the book. Like she was discovering herself, but by the end, she had so much confidence. When they told her that the thing with Martin was fake, she goes, oh yeah, I'm, you realize I work for a newspaper, right? Like I'm going to put an article in here about this and this and this and like totally oust you guys. And she got the last word. And that was my favorite. I was like, yeah, get it. It was so good. It was very satisfying. Yes. Her character development was really nice. Yeah, I found I just also love as that crazy she met a person as I was. Also probably just I can't. As as Pride and Prejudice That's so she cute. Is. Right. I'm confused about how this is advertised to normal people. Like, people who are the regular person that would normally like miss charming and miss heart with right they go in their first year thinking that it was real and then they discovered it wasn't um, and then they liked that better so i they feel kept like going. it could go either way or was it advertised maybe they have like Pretend friends of this. friends were like oh you should do this thing and here's what it's like and it's really cool and you can just get away from the world for a while and be an actor and blah, blah, blah. you know or you could have someone who has no idea what they're doing and be another Jane. She wreaked havoc on that place, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's the absolute the worst. The director or whatever is a terrible person, and I despise her. No. She almost I kicked her out, good like, was so close, and then one of the other was mean girls, to Jane. Was right, she was, was like, oh, no, time. it's my cell phone, I was hiding it. I'm like, yes, you freaking lied. Yes. That's right. <gasps> That's right. But only because Mr. Nobly held her, too. Part. Because he's in love with her. I love all of his lines at the end. He's just such... A romantic Mr. and the Nobody's end the is what made me want to see it as a movie like I was right on track to die alone and unnoticed this is so insane I'm not a romantic and if I don't make you feel like the most beautiful woman every day of your life then I don't deserve to be near you and then they kissed on the airplane until he was no longer afraid of flying oh my gosh that was ah. super cute. It's just crazy to me that this man just bought a plane ticket to a place that he doesn't know just to... Ugh. He just randomly bought a plane I ticket can't. to New York just so he could say goodbye to her. And then it was or, like, realistic. She was him. like, you know, he's not the end-all be-all. We're just gonna try dating from the start. And it was also realistic in that he's like, oh, yeah, an actor can surely find something in New York. I'm like, well, yes. Shh. 2007. Not right now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it's just also more very like unrealistic standards you for guys men. Get it. <laughs> it's just a very... It's just all very, like, Mr. Nobly was framed in the book exactly how Jane was seeing Mr. Darcy at the beginning of the book as this unrealistic standard to meet that, like, I love this guy so much, but he's not real. And I've never heard of a real person doing something like that. And there may be a few out there, but the chances are none of us are ever going to meet yeah. someone. Who's going to randomly buy a ticket to New York. It was straight Hallmark. From England. Like, there's no doubt To convince us it. to date him. Hallmark, do not make this movie. <laughs> You're not allowed. Stop. It's too good. 
Yeah, exactly. But it was fun and it was nice. Would to... you want Once I got to into go? It, I couldn't stop. Like, would you want to go to Austin Land? I thought about that a lot while I was reading it. I wouldn't want to go if it's all pretend. Because I'm not an actor. Right. It's really hard for me to separate the things that are happening from my actual feelings. And so, like, if a guy yeah, was pretending to be Yeah, that's the love hard me, part. I, I just thought it would that. be really fun to, to like, act for three weeks. But three weeks is a long time. I do, like, a week. <laughs> I just thought it'd be really fun. Like, I dress up for this stupid thing every week. I love, like, acting and pretending. I've always loved doing that, and I never pursued acting, and I thought I always had a, possibly a chance at <laughs> doing that. Yeah, I like acting yeah. and I like But you would just want to be like to be an independent story. woman, I mean, a spinster. I do it lady, all the time. Not oh, you're gonna be set up with this man and you have to walk with him across the garden or it's illegal and all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It would just make me really uncomfortable to know it was all fake. From like the man's perspective. Because, like, in Austin land, the women pay to be won over by the guys. But the guys are all paid to be there. So, I mean, it would be a little bit different if both sides were paying to be a part of it. Maybe it's just, it's not that yeah, I don't want to be pretend. That's I don't true, want to know that I'm being set in... up with an actor. Like, I want both sides to be in a mutual understanding of, like, Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Plus, it's kind of creepy this, to know that, like, you're paying this. for their job. And any, even anything that happens behind closed doors is fake. Like, it's 24-7 right. acting. That's the part that would freak me out. I'd be like, oh, no, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Yeah. But I think it would be fun to, like, go to a ball or do, like, a one-day yeah. thing. Oh, that'd be a blast. Where we get dressed up Guys, and we do this and then up. we go home. I always, this reminds me, like, I always wanted to go to Camp Half-Blood, like, the real one. Because that would have been so fun. Like, that's so cool that that's even a thing. I was very serious about going when I was like 13 I was like no I have to like you don't understand <laughs> like I get it uh, I just want to be in a bit it's fine yeah, I understand <laughs> don't worry about I it, understand the listeners might not understand <laughs> but one day we'll re re we'll reread Freddie Jackson nuts. and everyone's listeners yeah, just gonna be like us. oh we're okay. the critics. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. It was an originally going to have like a Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson name. <laughs> That's what's crazy. And we... Yeah. But we didn't do that. Mm. And it's probably for the best. We're going to read it whenever we yes. have Harry Potter in 10 years. Yes. And then about that time, the TV show oh, will come I'm out. I'm so pumped. And then we can oh, just ride yes. on the TV show. I can't. <laughs> I want to be in it. Let's go. Let's be in it. Yeah. And Let's the be TV in it. show? They're not ca casting right now. People kept messaging Rick on, like, social media and being like, how do I audition? Let's and go. He had to, like, Let's audition. post a statement Let's that was it. like, we're not casting yet. Please stop asking me. <laughs> yeah. I think about that a lot, about just, like, running away to be in a show. Like, I watch shows, and I'm like, what if they just did, like, a oh, yeah. casting call near me, and I, like, awesome. went and I auditioned, and then I got to be in this TV show. I just don't think Hollywood and I would yeah. agree very well. <laughs> I just don't like how fake Hollywood looks. 
Oh no, definitely. And then not. also, I don't really want to be a super big celebrity. I just want to be a normal person yeah. who talks to my best friend and people listen sometimes. <laughs> That's not gonna. I mean, that is happening. I don't know. But, like, I don't want to be how many people uh, like Chris Hemsworth or Chris Evans level point. famous. Because like, those movies are famous all around the world. But even just like really famous YouTubers. Like, that's just a level of everybody's watching you all the time, and people would notice you when you walked down the street, and it's just weird. It's like an understanding that the, you can be famous on the internet, but then that internet bleeds into real life, and I would rather keep those things a little bit separate sometimes. Did you just open the book upside down? I live in this fairy tale world where I believe that what happens no, on the it's internet like that. doesn't okay. affect my real life. No, it's not upside down. That's why I, I got confused. That's why I looked at it again. Because the house is upside down on the back. She's so annoying. Of the cover. Oh my gosh, Miss Charming was so annoying. No, not today. I just not opened today, to a random page and it was just her. And I was like, mm-mm, I hate this. I feel like this book would have improved if it was given a little bit more Yeah, I thought the same thing. Like, more pages. Because it's only, like, 200 pages. If we had just given a little yeah. bit more time to almost all of the events, probably would have worked out better. I mean, I like this story. I also think it so would do really well I a would like show. it more as a movie, unless it was something like Dash and Lily, where it's only eight episodes that are 20 minutes long, and it was just the one season. Yeah, you could. I just like yeah, I just think you can make a whole thing out of Austin. And you could make more out of it, but yeah. Yeah, I like her story too. I could also imagine a reality TV show like set in Austin land where people go kind of like mm -hmm. The Bachelor, but not that like would be one guy and a bunch of women. Maybe see like equal are you amount. Listening? This and is the content we want, really not the love. stupid Bachelor. <laughs> Enough! It's sad. I found out this week that people do Bachelor oh, Fantasy Suite. Or Bachelor no. Fantasy, like, like fantasy football, but for The Bachelor. That yeah, like, it's level, fine if you like that stuff. I don't... That I didn't need to know about. <laughs> with stuff like that, I never know what's real and fake, because most of it's fake, but you never know, and it's all really staged, and I don't like that. Yeah, I was telling someone the other day Oh that yeah, I could probably watch The Bachelor. Yeah, that would be fun. A bunch of my friends were watching it. If it was, like, a thing. Because a lot of people, a lot of people, like, watch it together with their friends. And, like, they turn it into a whole Yeah, event, that would be so like every cute. Every Monday we come That's together and we watch Bachelor and we, like, talk about it and we, like, make predictions. No. But, like, but just I've, me watching it by myself Like, the in TV my room, has like, been no. on and I was watching something before it and it comes on and I watch part of it and I'm like, okay, I'm done. I really liked the ones where the girl fell in love with the guy and they had to get another girl because she was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, this is great. <laughs> that made me laugh. Yeah, I tried to watch it a few years ago to like watch The Bachelor just by myself. And I watched the first episode and I was like, yeah, no, I'm done with so this. So it's more dramatic. <laughs> and I think yeah. it gets better as the season progresses because you get less people. And the first episode and the first episode is just like yeah, look at all these I just don't 30 like women that, the adults that are all trying like, adults. like really desperately to make you fall in love with them. I uh, They all just act like middle schoolers well, and it's adults stupid. don't act like adults in real life either. No, I agree. 
I also, I don't know, I don't watch the watch The Bachelor on a regular basis, but I tried to watch Love is Blind on Netflix, and that show just gave me so much anxiety because I didn't like the idea that the couples wouldn't last. Because the premise of that show is that you fall in love with no. someone without meeting, and then you have to like do all these things, and at the end you get married in like two weeks. And it was just very dramatic, and it was constant of, I didn't want to get attached to the couples because I was like, they're not going to last, they're going to break up, and it just was very, like, it was Don't a very weird Don't fall in love with our voices. Like. Listen, really guys. me out. Sorry. No. I don't know where I was going with that. What? Man. Because they're just talking to each other, know. right? Oh, God. But thanks, I guess. That's, yes. Don't fall in love with us. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're talking... I mean, you can marry each other. Don't worry about it. As long as it's not creepy. I'm probably not going to marry any of you guys. (laughs) Well, I didn't get to show my props naturally, so I have to bring them up (laughs) unnaturally, and that's so sad. Because my outfit is not Austin Land. Do you know how hard it is to dress up for an Austin Land book? Well, I do now. No, no. You're telling me that you don't have an empire away. And like the grandma to book's gonna father. be even harder. <laughs> I'm stressed. I need a green scarf, really quick. Don't. It's what? just normal people. What? In Sweden. What? what? No, I haven't been saying anything for the past <laughs> hour. Did you okay. say something? So. I was gonna be like, oh, handkerchief. <laughs> like, oh, I dropped my handkerchief. Oh no. You're gonna have to pick it up. Cause that's how you do things. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was mean. Ugh. Yeah, cause, You're okay. So stupid. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. I hate that. No they do that in Bridgerton all the time. Ah. Uh. Because the, the premise of Bridgerton is, like, it's the marrying yeah. season. And so it's just a bunch of girls, like, trying. Yeah. It's kind of like oh. Austin Land. Oh, my gosh. More dramatic and with more sex. <laughs> Where it's just, oh, oh I'm gosh. trying to win this guy. Yeah, so like, like Miss Charming having to, like, drop their she fainted, like, okay, and then she room. had to get carried to her room. I'm like, ugh, ugh, <laughs> gross. No. Um... Yeah. Like, I don't... Austin Land outfit was so hard, and I should have worn this shirt last week because it's blue and has Toy Story on it and Pixar, and... (sighs) You know, the struggle is real. And I've been holding this thing this whole time because I'm using it like a baton. You can't even see it. But I wanted to make the joke that I was like, Oh, Carrie, I am your biggest stalker! (laughs) It's... It's a fan. <laughs> One oh of those, gosh. like, hand fans. It's like an accordion. She just pulled out a whole fan. And I've been using it as a baton this whole time. Ma'am, please. Yeah, like the Disney thing. E, 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 e. It just looks like blurs <laughs> on my screen. Yes. That's funny. That's a thing on TikTok Oh my gosh, right now. yeah, that was horrific. Uh, I sent you that Shane post. <laughs> and then where he's just like, pants use on. this filter to Everything draw the was Shane covered the, the Disney Channel no logo. <laughs> I quote Smosh every week. Just and usually it's not intentional. Reaction. This week it was. Because that joke's funny. Yeah. Usually it happens before we start introducing, and I just cut that all out. <laughs> You're probably gonna cut it out. Don't worry about it. But here we are, 53 minutes in. I wish you could see my fan. It's so nice. ASMR. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how I'm feeling. From our friend's wedding. That's where I got both of these from. Where did you get that fan? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, yeah, I knew the handkerchief was For right this there. moment. I didn't get a fan then. For this moment, Carrie. Why do I need a fan? To, to dry away my tears. I don't dress up, that's your thing. That hurt my feelings. But I just okay. show up and look cute. No. No, it's too late. The bridge has been burned. You look cute too. Your dogs show up. That's your thing. Your dogs are always in the background. <laughs> This is fine. <laughs> ah, for ah, this episode, yeah, you're right. Anyways. Not for the next four months. <laughs> Sad. I'm moving back to school tomorrow. We're gonna be separated and then I have to forever. Get COVID tests guys, we're gonna infect everyone. It's so sad. Yeah. She's being dramatic. You said we needed dramatic it. About our you know what? I'm not getting into this right now. Video call. <laughs> yes. Microphones are a thing. It was a logistic choice that I made. <laughs> I liked recording together. By the way... We just... Oh, I do too. We just have different microphones that pick up different things. And yeah. it's easier to edit separate. Hamilton. Our first few episodes were together, using the same mic. Maybe this is terrible. Yeah, and then after our Hamilton episode, <laughs> I was like, maybe this isn't a good idea. Oh my gosh, what the heck? But we've improved a lot since oh then. Gosh, we're almost at day? our six month anniversary. It's, a... it's gonna be a In national February. holiday, you guys. I'm, I'm looking it up Don't right now. Mock me? I have a fan. National holiday. Oh my gosh, I thought the 23rd, I was so close. August 24th. Yay. So February 24th is our six month anniversary. I only know that it's six months because my birthday is in February oh. <laughs> and my brother's birthday is in August. So we're two ex almost exactly two and a half years apart by three days. Um... Thanks, Tim. Okay, what would you rank this I book? Think Rate? Seven. I always say rank, and I always mean rate. And I'm glad you it's know what I mean. It's not but... bad. It just, like, that was my enjoyment level. I feel like my enjoyment level was more than that, but there were parts I didn't like as much, especially the beginning. Um, so, seven. Nice. That's the goal. I wanted you to like it more than me. Any. Oh my gosh, we didn't even talk about New Beginnings. This is I so just... dumb. Oh my gosh. I'm so upset right now. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Um, <laughs> since our There's theme is New Beginnings and we forgot. <laughs> that's also true. I made a choice. She I forgot made when she a conscious too, choice. So... Exactly. That's how most of my idea. ideas pan out. And I come up with some crazy nonsense and then do something a lot more tame and mild. Yeah. It's with anything. But in only life. after it's I've fine. already committed to the crazy idea. <laughs> it's not just you. Ah, uh, yes. Um, what? Anyways. You do things with other people. <laughs> yeah, I I thought this had a good sense of new beginnings. I figured this would be very hallmarky, rom commy. Oh, it's all gonna turn out in the end. And that I'm glad that panned out because if it didn't, that would have been very awkward. But I just liked the idea that they were trying to start something new and she had finally grown out of her weird obsession that doesn't make any sense as a 30-year-old woman. Um, yeah. No, that's that's not I'm, what I'm saying. She I mean, I think legitimately was in video, love with but... this idea, and that yeah. isn't good. Like, I'm super obsessed with Jeremy Jordan. We all know this, but I'm right. not out here like, oh, I'm going to marry him one day. Like, that's 
that's completely on the other side of obsession. Like there's healthy obsession and then there's you can't move on with your life obsession. And that was where she was at. What a cute little baby. There's also an understanding that Jeremy Jordan is married already. <laughs> That's why I'm like with Corey Cott. I'm like, I love this man so much. Carrie, what? He's married. You can't say that. Kids. But if his wife ever dies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we love I'm just kidding. I just Broadway think he's a very, very, boys. very attractive man. Mostly them. Only them. Yeah. Mm. Like 99% them. That make their way in there every once in a while. Yeah. I'd agree to that. I like that the new beginnings were not just. Yeah, it was really nice. It was a nice book to start the new year with. A new mindset. For sure. It was like, oh, what do I obsess over what do i need to put away and start new i was thinking i was like this was a nice book to start the new year but i didn't this wasn't my first book that i finished in 2021 and then you were talking about what do i obsess over <laughs> that i need to put out and i was immediately thought of star wars and then i realized Nerd. that my first book of the new year was a star Nerd wars <laughs> Like, you know what? It's it? fine. Why not? Anyways. This is fine. Yes. It's great. So many. So, together we, like... we give this book seven and a half pineapples. What's our first? Which makes it our second highest nice. book that we've reviewed. Algernon messed us up, after man. <laughs> Algernon. Yeah, it was just so Algernon like there were definitely deeper concepts that were <laughs> developed a lot better and we had our soul conversation last week. Check out our soul and Algernon episodes, ladies and gents. Read a book on new beginnings. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah. Yeah. We have two good ones. <laughs> yeah, so next week we'll talk about... Close enough. My grandma said to tell you that she's sorry. Backman. Or whatever the title is. By Frederick something. Frederick Backman. big. That's I was nice. That I gave to okay. You. It's thick boy. No, but I was just like, oh, what book could she read in like a week? We didn't set a page limit. <laughs> Yeah. Next year we'll set oh, a, this we'll is set a, a limit. Yearly thing. Oh. <laughs> we'll have more rules next year. It'll be fine. I like it. Don't worry. I came up I with it. it. Did you not of course I want to do it again. Please. Oh, why Jake. can't it be the same theme? New beginnings are important. I'm coming up with a the theme though next year. <laughs> I literally found one in like five seconds. It was so that was hard to find. Literally the book in the front beginnings. of Half Christ books. The only reason I didn't get it was because I knew you would be walking into the same store looking at the same books as me, and you might find that one. Yeah. It's exactly. funny because I really did go into the same store this time as you, even though I don't live close to that one. Yeah. Anyway. 2021. That's a next year problem. Be good to us. If we survive that long. Help. Please. Anyway, thanks for listening. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Curly Critics Pod. You can also send us emails at curlycriticspod at gmail. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, or things Tweet us that random you just stuff. want to tell us. If you had a bad day, email us and we'll make Super you feel Super random. Better. Or we'll try to. Yeah. 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 Read Austin Land. Yeah. If you haven't already. Or even okay, if you bye. have, reread it. That's fine.
Okay, bye. <laughs> Welcome to the Jade Show. It is just me. Bum 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 muffins. <laughs>